we were lost and helpless, that you loved us, and you sent Jesus to this earth. We thank you that when anything to earn your favor, when we only deserved your wrath, that Christ died for us. I thank you, Lord, for what you have done. I thank you, Lord, that we can know you, that we can be a part of your, of your kingdom, a part of your family. And I pray today that you would show us your will, show us your way, show us what you want from us. And I pray that you would encourage us through your word this morning. We pray this in your name. Amen. Have any of you ever seen the show Ancient Aliens? Come on, admit it. Have you ever watched that show? Anybody? Oh, I see a hand. Oh, I see a few. Yeah. Um, I, wa I A long time ago, I watched a few of the episodes, but it, it really got to me after a while because their answer to everything is, is aliens, right? Something in the ancient world is unusual. The answer is it must be. But the truth is that idea that anything unexplainable in the ancient world is the result of aliens doesn't really have much of a leg to stand on. Unfortunately, many times in our world today, the culture that we live in, the things that they believe, the things they think are true, really are just shifting sands. Today, as we finish the Sermon on the Mount, we are going to talk about true wisdom. Wisdom that we can rely upon. Wisdom that we can build our lives upon. We are going to see, as Jesus concludes this sermon, with, last week if you were here with us, Jesus was bringing those who were listening to a point of decision. He said, you have two gates you can choose. You can choose the narrow gate or you can choose the wide gate. The wide gate leads to destruction. The narrow gate leads to life. He talked about how as we, as we go throughout our lives, there are two different types of fruit. There's good fruit and there's bad fruit. And we have a choice to make what we are going to do with the words of Jesus. As we conclude this message, Jesus is going to bring about that conclusion that we all have a choice of what we are going to do with what Jesus says. And if we choose wisdom, we have life. But if we choose to ignore Christ and ignore his words, we have no hope. Today, as we look at Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 24, we will see how we can know true wisdom Look at verse 24. Jesus says, Everyone who hears these words of mine and does them is like a wise man who built his house. Notice what Jesus says here. He is talking about true wisdom, how we can be wise. And he tells us some very important things. And it's our first point in our message. The wise hear and obey. Notice that Jesus says that. It's not just hearing the words of Jesus. That's the first part. He says, the, the, the man, everyone who hears these words, that's the first part of this process. We need to hear the words of Jesus. We need to know what Jesus wants from us and expects from us. We need to understand God's will. We need to understand God's word. But if we just hear and do nothing about it, we're going to see that there is no hope in that. I think sometimes people think, well, I've gone to church my whole life. I've listened. I've heard the words. That's enough. But what we see from Jesus' message here is that hearing is not enough. That if we stop with the hearing, that we never truly have wisdom. We never are on the path that God has for us. I think we're going to see that simply hearing is not enough to give us security of salvation. Many people hear, but hearing is not enough. 
Jesus says, everyone who hears these words of mine, and then what's the next part? And does them. That's where the obedience comes in. Now I want you to understand, Jesus is not teaching the salvation of works here. He is not telling us that if you simply obey and do what Jesus says, that you are saved. That's not what he's saying. I think what he's talking about is that, that we need to, um, that idea of repentance, we have to turn away from our sin. That we have to turn away and turn to God. Obey his will and obey what he has for us. We have to hear and obey. And the person who hears and obeys and does what Jesus wants, that is the person who's wise. That is the person whose life is built, whose house is built on a rock. We have to trust what God, what Jesus says. I saw this article, it was really interesting. Or no, it was an article, it was a book written by Paul Offit, and it's called Bad Advice. The subtitle is, Why Celebrities, Politicians, and Activists aren't your best source of health information. <laughs> and I haven't read the book, but I read about the book. And, and what this book is, is basically says, you should not get your health advice from celebrities. And there are a lot of them out there trying to tell you how you should manage your health, what you should eat, what you should do. You shouldn't look to celebrities. You shouldn't look to politicians or activists that, imagine this, the best advice for your health, can you guess who that is? I'm a doctor. The doctor, yes. Health professionals, people who have studies and know, and it says you can't base your decisions on your health on what people say. You have to base it on science, things that have been proven. Imagine that. Imagine that. Now the truth is, it's not just our health. I mean, many, many times it's unfortunate people listen to advice of people who don't know what they're talking about. I lived in a small town as a, when I was a youth pastor, and there was a chiropractor in town that everyone went to the chiropractor for everything. It wasn't just to get your back aligned. You know, um, someone broke a bone, they'd go to the chiropractor. Someone came to me and said, oh, my son has been diagnosed with learning disability. I'm like, oh, really? Where did he? Oh, the chiropractor told him. I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> you know, sometimes we go to the wrong places. And the world goes to the wrong place for wisdom. And they build their house, not on the rock. life 
that no one is spared from the storm. We know in life that the storm is coming. And if we're not prepared for it, Jesus talks about here, there's great destruction for those who aren't prepared. Storms of life are coming, and I don't know what they are for you. They're different for all of us. For some of us, it has to do with our health. For some of us, it has to do with relationships with others. Whatever it is, the storms are coming. I think of Jesus as he was preaching these words. The storms for the disciples. Think about what those were. They were going to be arrested. They were going to be, going to be beaten and whipped and put in prison. They were going to give their lives for Christ. The storms that awaited the disciples who heard these words where they were going to have to lay it all on the line for Jesus. They had the winds, the floods, they were coming. They needed to be ready for them. And we see that it wasn't just, you know, we look at the life of someone like Peter and we see there were failures along the way, right? There were times he stumbled, but he continued following after Jesus. And God worked in his life and God, God prepared him for the storms that were coming step by step by step. But because he believed Jesus, he walked in obedience with Jesus, he trusted Jesus. His life was an example of walking in wisdom. But not everyone is prepared I think we live in a time where we do a really bad job of preparing Christians to suffer. There is some really bad teaching out there that tells you that if you just have enough faith, you'll be healed. There's some bad teaching out there that says if you have enough faith, your life will be comfortable. You'll be rich and wealthy. <clears throat> when we look at scripture, that is the complete opposite of what Jesus tells us to prepare for as disciples of him. I think it's interesting, later on in Peter's life, and Peter in 1 Peter 4 says this, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. Here's Peter, who heard these words from Jesus. Later on, towards the end of his life, he says, People, church, don't be surprised when fiery trials come. But over and over, I've even found in my life, when fiery trials come, I am surprised. And my first reaction is to say, God, what are you doing? Why are you allowing this in my life? Sometimes people get very bitter at God and turn away from God when the fiery trials come because they think that because they trust in God, God is going to take away all of the pain and all of the trials. But that is not what God promises us. Peter says, don't be surprised as though something strange were happening to you. But verse 13, but rejoice in so much as you share Christ's suffering that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed for if you are insulted for the name of Christ you are blessed because the spirit of glory in God rests upon you this is wisdom this is wisdom here from someone who experienced it he says, don't be surprised when it happens. Rejoice when it happens. I mean, here, here is the craziness of this. This is the complete opposite of how we would react in our human strength. This is the complete opposite of how we would typically respond to a fiery trial. But this is what can happen through the Spirit of God and the power of God as we trust in God Paul Peter is able to say, rejoice, rejoice, even when you go through the fiery trials. 
The storms are coming. Jesus told us to expect it. Peter told us to expect it. James, in James chapter 1, verse 2 says, Count it all joy, brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. You notice this theme throughout Scripture? It tells us over and over to rejoice in our trials. To rejoice. But James, he says, For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. James says, listen, when God brings a trial in your life, be joyful because God is doing something. God is strengthening you. Some of you may be saying, I'm strong enough. I've had enough. <laughs> James says, God is doing a work so that we can be perfect and complete. Mature. That's what he's talking about. Sometimes to grow, you need to be stretched. Sometimes to become strong, you need to, in, in our physical body, you need to work out. And working out is not fun. Well, for some of you, it may be fun. When I started a workout routine, you know, the, doing lifting weights, doing push-ups, trying to do pull-ups, you know, that's not fun. It hurts. And I'm usually sore for a little while. But it produces strength. And when we walk through those trials, when those storms of life come, and this is what's happened in my life, I've had a number of storms come in my life. And after each storm, I can look back and say, look what God did in my life. I didn't think I could handle that. But through the strength of God, he provided the strength and the help that I needed. After each storm, the trust for God has increased and increased. And it hasn't always been easy. Sometimes the, strong, the storms get stronger and stronger and stronger. But through each, God is at work. And when we trust in Him and walk in Him, we will not be overtaken by the storm. <clears throat> right before we moved to Iowa, our last year in Florida, we were struck by a hurricane. And it was a pretty big hurricane. And it was the first that the kids had been through. And it was scary. We decided to stay. A lot of people we knew got out of town because it's no fun to go through our hurricane. We stayed and the winds blew. It was horrible. And it went on all day long. And there was a time where I was a little nervous. Would our house be okay? Thankfully, some trees fell but no damage to our house. And part of the reason for that is there are codes in Florida on what, how they can build houses. They are made to withstand hurricanes because hurricanes often hit in Florida. And so many, there was some damage to some people's houses. Actually, it's probably the worst damage people had, but for most part, houses withstood the storm. Because when you build a home in Florida, you have to build it to withstand the storms. As Christians, as we think about building our lives on Christ, we need to build our lives on the rock so that we can withstand the storm. We know that the storms are coming. We know That if we don't build our lives on Jesus, we're like the fool who builds on the wrong foundation. We're like the fool who thinks life is all about our job or money or even our families. But our jobs won't last forever. Money will fail. Friends will disappoint and betray. Sometimes even family will disappoint and betray. When we place our hope in somebody or something, it will fail. They will fail. And when the storms come, we won't be able to stand. Thankfully,
Jesus tells us that we have hope. That through his word, through his message, not just in this passage we're reading today, but the whole message, the message that we've seen from the beginning, we are sinners, we fail, we cannot the law, but that where we fail, Jesus has come as our perfect sacrifice. <coughs> Jesus came and gave his life for us. Jesus died on the cross, and his blood that he shed for us is enough to cover the price of our sins. Where we failed and gave in to sin, Jesus conquered sin and death through living a perfect life and presenting himself as a perfect sacrifice. He took the wrath of God, the judgment that God had pointed towards us, he took it on himself when he died on the cross for our sins. That when we trust in him, when we place our faith in him, when we understand that we cannot do anything on our own, we cannot earn our salvation, but we are solely reliant upon him and his work. When we place our faith in him, first of all, we are forgiven, we are redeemed, we are saved from our sin. And that's just the beginning. When we are saved, when we trust in him, we need to build our life on Him. We need to build our families on Him. We need to build our marriages on Him. We need to build this church on Him. Because when we do, we will be building our lives, our marriages, our homes, our church on a solid rock. So that when the storms come, we will be secure, not because of us, but because we build our lives, our homes, our marriages, our church, on rock that cannot be moved. As we conclude this message, I want to leave with the final words of this chapter, which are really significant. Verse 28, when Jesus finished these sayings, the crowds were astonished at his teaching. For he was teaching them as one who had authority and not as their scribes. What Jesus did was really interesting throughout this whole message. If you, if you look at the Jewish culture and Jewish education, a lot of times when they come to questions, what they do is often debate about what one rabbi says as opposed to another rabbi. And they, they go back and forth, and part of their tradition is to talk about what all the rabbis say. Notice that's not what Jesus did. Jesus didn't point to some other teacher. Jesus said, this is what God wants. This is what I say. You have heard it said, but this is what I say. Jesus was showing them God's will through his teaching. And I just want to encourage you that this is still true today. Jesus still teaches with authority and power, unlike what we see in our culture around us, which has none of these things. This whole point at the end of the message is to bring people to decision. What are you going to do with the words of Jesus? And I believe for us, the message that Jesus has for us is we need to build our lives on these words. That's what it comes down to. <clears throat> if, if, first of all, it's trusting in Christ, placing your faith in Him. If you've never done that, that is the first step. After that, it's walking in discipleship day by day by day, building your life on the words of Jesus. Walking in obedience to Him. Doing what he wants. That is the way to have security in life. That is the way to true wisdom. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this morning and for your words. We thank you that you speak with authority. We thank you that you speak truth. And that you have wisdom that can give us security in our lives. 
Lord, I pray that we would choose to walk in discipleship and in obedience to you. I pray that we would base our lives upon your words. I pray that we would base our marriages, our families, our church, our businesses, everything we do that will be done for your honor, for your glory. Help us, Lord, because I know some of us are going through a storm right now. Some of us are going through fiery trials right now. And Lord, I pray that we would have the, the safety and security of building our lives on you. I pray that you will give us the wisdom that defies understanding that we can rejoice even as we suffer, even as we struggle. That we can see you, you work through those trials. We can see the good that we have in spite of the difficulties we face. Help us, Lord. Give us wisdom. We walk after you. Thank you. We pray this in your name.